All right, it's time for Mr. Asarathas ReZero, Season 3, Episode 4, Caught Content. ReZero's Greatest Mystery. Greatest Mystery? Well, the thumbnail was regarding Al, but I'd say that Satala in The Witch of Envy is the bigger mystery, but hey, give it to me. Episode 4 marks our first priority episode of the season, and while it has its highlights... Oh, it was a priority episode. I mean, a lot of things were moving around. Things were like... The action was really hype, so I guess it was a priority episode. Things were popping off. It's not what I expected. Oh? We've got a lot to talk about for this good episode, though, so let's... Oh, it's just good. It's not 10 out of 10. Everyone is glazing, saying 10, 10, 10, 10, but Mr. Asarathus says no. This priority episode was actually not as good as it could have been. Why? Just get right into it. Okay. We start with Garf and Mimi heading into City Hall in response to Capella's broadcast. Garf can smell the scent of blood, and Mimi desperately tries to get him to stop, but Garf continues pushing forward. Should have anyway, listened to Mimi. Finding a pile of corpses and the two who did it. Despite Mimi's cries of retreat, Garf goes in any way and fights the two hooded figures and quickly feels that he has been pushed to the brink of death. This is when Mimi pays the price for Garf's wounded pride as he no! tries to desperately heal the wound, but something isn't right. Pride. Garf feels pride. He's not wrong, right? Way too... He just always wanted to prove himself, right? It's like a dog at a different dog park. It's a bigger dog and a smaller dog wants to bark and be like, I'm, I'm, I'm stronger than you. Let me establish my dominance. Sometimes you need to know when the fuck to walk away. To those that have watched my previous cut content videos, what is happening here should be readily apparent. This episode marks yet another stumble for Garfield, going on a horrendous tailspin as his pride has been damaged, his past wounds have been scratched open, the haunting figure of Elsa creeps up behind him, and now mm -hmm. his lack of thought ends up causing Mimi a potentially fatal wound. Surprisingly though, he recovered real fast. Ricardo gave him a good pep talk, and Garfield's very simple-minded. He recovered pretty well, but... He is in a very emotionally volatile state. There's so many different things piling on. The power insecurity, Elsa taunting in a schizo delusions, mom, new family, but memory loss. The kids and dad needs to be saved. And Mimi also not being injured because of Garfield. Wonder what this is going to do to him. Is he going to just basically fight better now? Because now he realizes that he has, he's fucked up too much and he needs to, you know, own up for his mistakes. Or will this, you know, continue to like stockpile? After this, we get a scene between Heinkel and Felt. Fun fact, this scene is entirely anime original, as we eventually only hear that this happened. Okay, okay, well you heard that it happened. It's not completely like, like, random, but like, okay, that's pretty cool. What's not cool is that Reinhardt's benched, but you know how it is with Reinhardt. Two OP characters, right? Think about it. Roswell? <laughs> you know Tape would never bring Roswell to Pristella. What the fuck is Roswell doing right now to Mansion, bro? Don't tell me he's busy. He ain't do shit. He's too busy fucking around, you know, trying to set up Subaru back in season one and two. Now he's not even doing that anymore. I guarantee you his lazy ass ain't doing shit. But if we had the strongest mage in Pristella along with Reinhardt, I think it'd be a little bit too easy, you know? We gotta find clever ways to kind of nerf or make excuses for why these characters are absent when we need them the most. However, we get to see that Felt has been taken hostage by Heinkel, and is the primary reason why Reinhardt is being kept in check, and why the threat of the Witch Cult can't be dealt with. Given our timeline, it's likely Bullshit. this is very shortly after he's available to help for Sirius. If Reinhardt can't contribute right now, what do you guys think is going to happen? I don't know, but it's just... That, that's why I never bet anything on Reinhardt. Like, remember, what did Reinhardt do in Season 1? Bro showed up in the beginning and popped off in Episode 3 against Elsa, and I was like, this is amazing. I hope we get more Reinhardt scenes. Never again seen. We see him, but he's never actually fighting and clutching for us, right? So, yeah, he popped off against Sirius, I guess, in that one run, but now it doesn't really matter. What's gonna happen? I hope Felt figures something out. But the issue isn't really Felt being held hostage. I don't think Felt's really in danger, to be honest. That's all the theatrics. Felt has the blessing of wind. I bet she could fucking figure something out. The bigger issue is that if we confront Heinkel, it's the political, diplomatic, like, like, consider it being like sanctions put on Reinhardt. You know how we don't own the Von Austria real estate, the assets. Everything belongs to Heinkel. And Velt basically said in episode one, our fate pretty much, you know, is in the palms of this old man. So we got to, like, not go against him or there's going to be worse thing that could happen in the future. But I just hope that Priscilla shows up and just knocks Heinkel out so we can do shit again. We cut back to the meeting that started in episode 3, and after hearing about the witch's remains, Subaru can't help but feel a chill run down his spine. How could that be when the Witch of Envy was sealed, not killed? Mm. Of all the people that reassured him, it's Aldebron who pipes up and tells him that they don't necessarily belong to Envy. 
as there are other witches. How would he know that? There is some nice Subaru characterization here that is cut, but after that, we address the elephant in the room. Capella Ow. Emirata Lagunica. That's right. Emirata Lagunica Chan Sama. Is she a forbidden love child? But like Capella apparently existed a long time ago, like 50 years back or something, right? Back in Wilhelm's days. Mm, the eye color being slightly pink, does that have anything to do with her witch factor or is it something else? Mm, my theory is that maybe she's a forbidden lost child of a Lugnican royal that fucked a beast person and, you know, that, that kid was born. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe... There's some, uh, a kid that was also saying how, like, don't think about how Capella is a humanoid form turning into a dragon, but rather a dragon into a humanoid. And, and then we can go into even more, you know, crazy schizo theories of, like, who Capella could be. And I'm thinking of Covenant, Blood Ties, Lugunican Royal Family, but that's not, you know, the dragon isn't Volcanica. But if it was somehow related, then we could kind of use that Covenant Blood Association to reason as to why she has the Lugunica features and last name. Is she just role-playing? Or is she actually legit? I don't know. The Capella part of her name is unique, but there was in fact a member of the royal family yep. known as Emirata, and both Al and Cruz consider her to be faking. Emirata was alive during the period of the Demi-Human War 50 years ago, and there is a bit of cut information here. Yeah, I bet she fucked a Demi-Human 50 years ago, and that's what Capella is now. Emirata was beautiful and wise, but cruel to the extreme. She was branded as a heretic, and her death was suppressed for a long while. She was branded as a heretic, and her death was suppressed for a long while. But again, you told me Teresia died. It looking like she is bad. So whenever people quote unquote die, I don't believe that shit. They usually just fucking join the witch cult. <laughs> Look at Juice. Look at maybe Fortuna if that's serious, right? Uh, I don't know. A cruel person that was labeled a heretic a long time ago, quote unquote died. Sure, bro. There is an entire sequence here cut for Ferris relating to the royal family, which we can touch on later. We learned quite a bit. Excuse me? Entire sequence here cut for Ferris relating to the royal family. Felix relating to the royal family? Was suppressed for a long while. There is an entire sequence here cut for Ferris relating to the royal family, which we can touch on later. We learn What the fuck is that word you're saying after Felix something to the royal family? There is an entire sequence here cut for Ferris relating to the royal family. Relating to the royal family? Relating how? What does that mean? Relating? Felix does not have Luganic in blood, but somehow Felix can relate to the royal family regarding this Capella shit? Okay. Which we can touch on later. We learn quite a bit about Capella in this episode, so what is Capella? Well, it's the brightest star in the constellation of Aria. Constellations, here we go. the sixth brightest star in the sky. Rising at about 9pm at the time of recording, you can see it shining and flickering beauty pretty early in the night sky. Is there any other names? Almaz, Menkalina, Asalina, something. Capella represents the goat that the charioteer in Ariga is the carrying. The goat. In Greek mythology, the goat's horn was accidentally broken up and transformed into the cornucopia which could be filled with whatever its owner desired, which may play an interesting part in what her power seems to be. Her power seems to be changing into different beast types and partial transformations to other, you know, like, animals and shit. We even heard, like, insects, apparently. Capella was also considered as Capella of the Pleiades, due to its role in pointing out that sight in the night sky, which we'll get- Whoa, 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 what are you? Hold up, hold up, hold up. It was also considered as Capella of the Pleiades, Capella of the Pleiades is crazy because Pleiades is Subaru. Due to its role in pointing out that sight in the night sky, which we'll get into later. We discover that Anastasia... Capella points to... What? Okay. We know that like the constellations are a huge deal in ReZero, and it points to Pleiades. That's seeming like there's some connection between what Subaru is doing and Capella. Maybe it's going to be helpful at the end. I cleverly hijacked the witch cult's old conversation mirrors from season 1, as Julius and Ricardo call in and we learn that Mimi has been terribly wounded. We move down to the infirmary with Ferris using healing magic, and Kiritaka finally arrives. He confirms that this city was used as a trap for a witch. When Subaru tries to think about who it could be, a small murmur comes from inside Al's jet black helmet, as he mutters that Typhon had drowned in a flood. And it's so fucking stupid how Subaru doesn't say anything about this. Because, yeah, I guess there's too much things going on. It's, everything is confusing. Everyone's panicking. And there's not a moment for Subaru to really, you know, realize what the fuck Al just said. But, like, come on, bro. You just really gonna let him say all this sus shit? You're gonna make a look and nothing's gonna matter? Like, confront him about this, but we can't. Because Tape's a fucking troll and he would never allow that to happen. It was also stated that there are really no records remaining, and it is only a myth that one met their end here, so how does Al know? 
he has some connection with the witches, man. Regarding the Mimi stuff, though, they were said to be like a divine protection shared between Hetaro TV and Mimi, the, tri the triplets. They have like a divine protection that they apparently share. We saw some blood stains on the siblings as well. Does that mean they take shared damage? That's why Mimi isn't dead. Like if they didn't have that, maybe the damage would have been too much and Mimi would have just died. I'm not too sure. But I'm thinking that it's like reduced damage. And then beyond that is the other two don't have the Grim Reaper blessing, right? It's only Mimi that's been infected with it, right? Let's put a pin in this for now. Ricardo thanks Garf for saving Mimi and Garf can't believe that. His actions are why Mimi has wound up where she is. I feel like Ricardo definitely understands the situation and wanted to kind of like make Garfield feel better about himself. So the thank you for saving Mimi is less of actual genuine thank you and more of like, you know what? Shit got fucked up. It's okay. We have to move on. Let's cheer you up. Come on, let's go. Garf, who had such a strength-based personality, had so much of it crumbling down around him in one day, but last episode did give us a moment of reprieve for him. Him crying on the rooftop is a great moment, because while one traditionally might think of crying as weakness, unfortunately due to many preconceived notions about the particular situation, it's a moment of strength, finally processing everything that has happened to him, accepting his feelings, and stealing his resolve to keep going, until, you know. Al says it's time to talk about what is next. We see Wilhelm put a hand over his shoulder, informing everyone that it is likely the divine protection of the Death God. Yeah. This is touching on a bit of cut content, but it's not all the way yet, so we'll talk about it later. Priority number one becomes stopping Lust by retaking City Hall. There's a bit more cut here that I think will be relevant for anime only, so stay tuned for that. As the crew heads out... Dude, I swear to God, we've had like... No, because he does the cut content at the very end here. I'm like, bro, we have like 13 separate flags that you said. This is happening, but not yet, so I'll tell you later. This is happening, flag for in the future. This is, no, they will cut content. This is, okay. Bro, what are you going to tell me? Just a separate section. This is all going to be handled here. Subaru asks Al what he's going to do if he can even fight. And in a stark contrast from earlier, Al says that the situation has changed and he's going to go fight Priscilla. Troll. He states that he has no use in this boss fight and that Subaru shouldn't be fighting either, but... He has no use in this boss fight? And Subaru shouldn't fight either? Why? Why are you useless? Well, what's similar about Subaru and Al? Well, it's looking like Al also has a fucking authority. Maybe he has the authority of pride by the process of elimination. Who knows? I don't think Al is weak. Is Al really that weak? I refuse to believe it. We've never seen him fight. But Subaru did try to make a comment of like, how strong really are you, Al? And then once Al left, Subaru was like, well, shit, it looks like I'm the fucking weakest link again. I doubt Al is weak. That's a crazy assumption to be making. This dude was a literal fucking gladiator before. That's where he lost his arm. There's no way this is a weak person. Accepts it. He has one piece of advice, the word advice said in English, and states that if gluttony shows up, don't say your real names. A shiver runs up Subaru's spine, and Al turns and just dips. Watch next episode literally just start off with Subaru versus gluttony as, you know, that was the cliffhanger. Other than the Amelia regular stuff. And Subaru says, I'm Natsuki Subaru. <laughs> What if Roy is like, who are you? I am Natsuki Subaru, the man that will beat you and take Rim back. It's like, oh, you fucking retard. You gave your name away. Why would you do this? Now, Aldebron has been incredibly suspicious in this episode, being the one to bring up other witches, yeah. somehow being aware of Typhon and her method of death, mm -hmm. and now speaking English and giving advice on gluttony. Not to mention- Yet, yeah, Subaru makes no comments. All we get are some side eyes here and there. It's one of the most frustrating things in ReZero. When the elephant in the room is literally in front of us, but the main character refuses to take advantage of the situation. Why? For plot fucking purposes. Of course Tape is not going to make Subaru confront Al and get us all the fucking secrets out. Of course not. But it's so frustrating. It's like the same shit back at the fucking tea party when we're literally talking with the Witch of Envy. We have everything we need, yet we don't ask her about the most important shit. It's fucked up. That's one of the things I hate about ReZero sometimes because everything is in front of us. This is a just like a once in a lifetime opportunity, yet this motherfucker tunnel visions and usually there's some other bullshit happening. You're like, please, you have to understand Subaru's mindset currently. You don't realize that he's all brain scrambled. Fuck you. That's some bullshit excuses. You and I both know that even if it makes sense from a storytelling perspective, it's just so annoying. His sudden heel turning about the fight for City Hall, Al or Aldebron is extremely suspicious. But what is 
There is no use to doubt our allies in this situation. Look at that. Another fucking glazer protecting this bullshit storytelling where the author is intentionally hiding information from us. Who the fuck is saying doubt our allies? No one's doubting Al. I want to know how the fuck do you know that? Did I ever ask, is Al telling a lie? No, I'm going thinking he's telling the fucking truth. And then you come in saying, no, no, no. Subaru could have never confronted him there because we can't doubt our allies. Fuck you. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying, Al, how do you know about the Witch of Pride? Al, how do you know about gluttony and the name stuff? Wouldn't that be nice? No, not a single comment made. Aldebron. That's right. Star time. Aldebron is the brightest star in the constellation. All right, constellation time. It's called Aldebron because it derives from Arabic meaning the fall. What's the use of getting more info than necessary? What's the point of you making these comments? Sit down and think about what you're doing right now. Everyone is on the same page of there's some bullshit there that we want to know, but we're not getting it due to storytelling reasons. And you are literally deep throating the author's dick saying, just trying to do mental gymnastics, trying to figure out just like, oh, what's the point doubting our allies? Oh, what's the use of getting more waiting for the necessary? Because I want to know the fucking story, retard. Like, it's crazy to me that you're sitting here typing that bullshit, defending this, saying like, no, you shouldn't need to know. Why should you doubt our allies? And you, oh, you, okay, you, you countered the, the allies part. Oh, you, you, what's the use of getting more from the necessary? What's the point of your comments? Why do you play the devil's advocate and go on that side instead? Any reasonable normal person would feel frustrated, yet you're like, no, I must defend, I must defend. Just brainless retards. Follower, as the star is notable for chasing the Pleiades throughout the sky, both being up at a- Take note of that. Aldebran chases Pleiades. Meaning the follower. As the star is notable for chasing the Pleiades throughout the sky, both being up at around 9.30 p.m. at the time of recording. Aldebaran and Capella both point to the Pleiades, maybe? Right? We have Capella over here. Around 9.30 p.m. at the time of recording. Aldebaran. It follows the Epic of Gilgamesh, in which the Bull of Heaven was unleashed upon the world before being slain Gilgamesh by Gilgamesh mentioned. in Kidu, and having the bull thrown- Holy shit, fate lore. <laughs> no, this is not fate lore. Gilgamesh and Enkidu are actual, like, things. Fate just fucking copies that shit and makes them into husbands or waifus, but... A bull? Heavenly bull? What the fuck? Enkidu, and having the bull thrown into the sky to form the constellation of Taurus. And would then- They threw a bull to the sky? Okay. ...be seen as a hunter following its prey, the Pleiades. Fun tidbit, by the way, uh, certainly not related in any way. The Pleiades in Japan are known as- Subaru. Subaru. The Uniter. ...what you will. Make sure to comment down below any theories you may have on Aldebaran, uh, the character. Al is clearly an isekai character that's been confirmed, that reeks of the witch's scent, which is confirmed, that most likely has an authority, which is not confirmed yet in the anime, and may be the fucking Archbishop of Pride candidate. I don't fucking know, bro. I want to really believe that Al has those powers, and that's why Tape is just hiding everything. He's just hiding everything about Al, and it's so annoying, but I get it. You're trying to set up for that future. Now, regarding the Pleiades Uniter stuff, right? Subaru, the Uniter, even the Subaru logo is a logo with six stars in it. Six is a number of how many archbishops there are. You could reason as to the witch factors that he doesn't have yet. Well, you know, now we have Glut uh, Sloth and Envy. We always had Envy if we kind of take away that minus one. Uh, we also know that the Archbishop of Envy never really existed, but I'm assuming that's it's because Subaru is fucking there. I don't, I don't really know. It's looking to me more and more that Subaru is the uniter. He's going to be collecting powerful allies, foes, friends alike, but at the same time, collect all the different witch factors, right? That's why constellations really matter. And if Aldebaran points or follows Subaru, isn't that a good thing, right? It's like a... It's a good thing of how... He could be like, I mean, we're allies. We're very friendly. We're very friendly right now. He, he, he's a follower of Subaru. That's, that's what it's seeming like that, right? Character the star. The final section of this episode takes place in front of City Hall, which... Motherfucker, you're sitting here writing fucking essays defending yourself over a fucking comment made 10 minutes ago. Fucking get over it. I get the fact that people get frustrated by this. No, you don't. If you understood that people get frustrated by this, you would have understood that and never made a fucking comment defending the bullshit fucking perspectives of the characters. Like, I told you everything.
If you truly understood, you would have never, ever have defended the author's perspective because I told you that this is the way the storytelling is done. And of course, the author doesn't want to tell you all the fucking mysteries. Yet, after knowing that you would make those comments, fuck you. You're backtracking now, dumbass. Go take a fucking day off. Holy shit, you're annoying. Cre account created August 1920. You probably... Let me get the fucking fucking four minutes. Get, no, 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 no. You take a fucking week. Get the fuck out of your annoying commenter. Which is an all-out brawl between our team and theirs, including 20 pink-colored masses of flesh that now sit in front of the building. And this is where the corpse used to be. The corpse used to be here when Garfield and Mimi was here. Now they've turned into these, like, zergling, hatching egg shit. We got some really great action sequences as everyone busts out their cool flashy moves against the cultists, and the anime finally lets Subaru be raw and use his whip to shift the advantage too. The battlefield changed- It did shift the advantage. Great wordplay here. Because this is Body Gotti's foot. And we, you know, Body Gotti was like popping off with like eight arms and stuff like Tenshihan shit. And Subaru's whip landed and caught him off balance and it opened up an opportunity. It did shift the momentum. Shift the advantage too. The battlefield changes when Capella comes down as a black dragon. She comments about Subaru's scent, asking if he got lost, which I can only imagine refers to his miasma. Julius unleashes his out- Yeah, she did mention the scent, but I thought the show has pretty much confirmed that only Rem can smell it. Rem and another descendant of the Oni clan in the If Greed route, or the Sloth route, and uh, Ryuzu, right? Ryuzu Shima, I think. But Capella did make a mo note that like you smell different. There's something particular about you. I don't know. What about Betrugus? What about season one Betrugus content about how he's annoyed that Subaru has way more witches miasma, that such a thick scent of the witch's love, you know, is upon you, yet you're being such ignorant person, you don't even know the love that you have, right? He clearly made a comment about that. How could someone possibly know that if they cannot detect the miasma? What the fuck is up with this? How does Betrugus know this? Why are people telling me that these are the only people that can smell the scent, yet the show has shown Betrugus and now Capella that kind of implies that, like, they detect that shit. Huh? Clausiria, which completely ravages Capella's body, but we see an incredible regeneration sequence, as the narration at this part of the chapter states that Capella has conquered death. The clock tower rings, and Ca Capella has conquered death. She cannot- I mean, <laughs> is this the same shit like Elsa, where basically we just need to hit a threshold? It's not like they're immortal. Elsa's not really immortal, right? It's not like we've gone, we haven't gone against foes that have these crazy region powers just before yet. And Capella retreats into the building, but they can't afford to let her break the morale of the city, so they go after her until they run into the Sin Archbishop of Gluttony, Roy Alfred. Roy! There's two of them. Yeah, two different last names. Enough, but we also get a post credit scene of Regulus asking Amelia if she's a virgin. Does Amelia know what that even means? Are you a virgin? Anna Rose trolled Amelia about, you know, babies are made when you kiss, but she's been corrected of that. But I feel like Amelia is so pure and naive and innocent that she truly may not know. Interesting priorities for a senior bishop. Oh, yeah. Very interesting priority. I think it's hilarious how, again, everyone else is like in battle and doing fucked up shit. And what Regulus is doing is definitely, you know, messed up. But at the same time, it feels like he's going on a different side quest. Feels like Regulus is just doing his own thing, completely different of what everyone else is doing. Overall, considering this episode was billed as a priority episode, can't help but feel a little bit disappointed that it had weaker action scenes than even episode 2 at times. Ooh, priority episode, yet it had weaker action scenes than episode 2. What was episode 2? Episode 2 was Reinhard versus serious stuff. That shit went hard. Was last episode that? I don't know. My standard of animation is not as um, harsh as Asarata's, but maybe he's making a good point. Not to say that this was a bad episode. Yeah, the Emilia versus Sirius stuff too. If you really think about it, episode 2 definitely popped off and it's more memorable than, I guess, the Krush swinging our swords or Yulius using spirit arts. Yeah, maybe. That's what I'm saying, bro. All we needed was White Fox to not be lazy. And I'm not shitting on White Fox. I think it's just funny to, you know, nitpick about this. If we just had the fucking dragon, breath be animated, maybe people have a different opinion. Because it wasn't at all. It was greatly consistent and Capella's dragon looked fantastic in a scene where everyone expected her to be a 3D model. Mm -hmm. I just never really got the feel Not of CGI. priority outside of a cut or two, and my only hope is that because of the dragon and multiple- Well, who told you that this is a priority episode? Do you work for Studio White Fox? Well, source material readers are 
understanding what's the most important part of the arc and trying to assume that because I place so much emphasis on these this, you know, part of the light novel, and since this anime episode is going to be covering that part, therefore it must be priority. Or is this like insider staff info? I have no clue. All ...characters in the battlefield, it hindered what could be from future priority episodes. We don't have any tremendous cuts, just some overall consistent ones with the anime continuity, and a few things that are unfortunately removed. First, during the discussion about Amarada Lagunica, yeah. her cause of death was removed. It was said that she... She is a heretic. Apparently, she was killed and people hid it like a secret. She succumbed to illness at a young age, and I'm not sure if this made it into the anime, but Wilhelm talks about how her death was not mourned by the kingdom. Not mourned by the kingdom. They really just, like, snuck that shit. They, they just hid that death. But it's sounding like maybe uh, she was just, I don't know, banished, exiled. Maybe someone took her. Maybe Pandora did something. I don't know, but how convenient that... There was this supposed death, and she was hated, and the kingdom did not mourn her death, yet now she just appears as Capella Emerada Lugunica, right? And she was denied a state funeral. Also about Capella, upon hearing that someone may be impersonating a royal, Ferris gets extremely angry, shaking mm. his fists in rage, saying that they are doing something unforgivable. This is a direct reference to the side material known as EX-1. Oh yeah, this is the friend, right? We're gonna, we're gonna cover the EX-1, and actually it's from Asarata himself. Except the community member kind of edited the content to remove the spoiler shit, but this guy, right? He's like childhood friend, Luganican royal, loved Krush. Which goes over the past of Krush and Ferris. I would recommend reading it, or if you don't feel like doing that, I also have a video on it. However, yep. it contains massive spoilers for season 3, so maybe wait if you don't want to be spoiled. There was also a cut where the people at the round table note how calm and collected Subaru is for once in his life. And to shift any and all possible compliments towards himself away, he states that if it causing a stink and having a tyrantrum would solve things, he would do that. <laughs> okay. I think Subaru has been shown to make active, like, there's been active dialogue from himself, self-talk of like, come on, calm down. We need to calm down. Multiple times, he reminds himself to chill and just like, you know, catch him in the, in the heat of the moment, which is nice, you know, growth. Al, of all people, pipes up and says that Subaru is twisted in his own way. And this is a comment that actually bothers Subaru, but... Twisted in his own way. Yeah, because Subaru has an authority about you, Al. What are you hiding, bro? But he tries to ignore it for the rest of the meeting. If you watched cut... It's so troll! Al is just chirping. He's just sliding in such suspicious one-liners here and there. And every time Al says something, we're like, Huh? Okay. Huh? What, what the fuck? T-phone? Huh? Gluttony, how, what, how do you know about this shit? Content videos or heard about this one, you will know exactly why Wilhelm put his hand on his shoulder. That's right, bl uh, Shinigami, that's uh, Divine Protection. And diagnosed what the Divine Protection affecting Mimi is. At the end of Arc 3, Wilhelm and Subaru were supposed to have a conversation where Wilhelm tells him that his shoulder wound is bleeding again. That's a wound right. inflicted by his wife, Theresia von Astrea. But why the fuck would Theresia ever wound Wilhelm other than Wilhelm being a shitty ass parent? Sorry, wife and husband. Sorry, husband. He's not a wife. Um, well, we know that, quote-unquote, Reinhardt killed Theresia. What would ever compel a kid to do that? To kill his grandma. Maybe grandma got possessed by something bad. She turned evil. Maybe a spirit possessed her. Who knows? Um, and if we're assuming that logic, then maybe that possessed evil state slash Reinhardt. I mean, sorry, Wilhelm, maybe. Via her divine protection of the Death God. It was something cut from season one, unfortunately, so we lost some good foreshadowing points. But yeah, why did you cut you that shit, bro? That's season two content. Goes to City Hall, there's a small cut here that I thought I would clarify for anime only because I thought that they might wonder why this happened. But if you're wondering why they aren't sending any of the dragon scales or more soldiers to retake City Hall, it's because they decided to station them at HQ to protect it. And if you're wondering why Subaru. Whoa, 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 go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. In deciding who goes to City Hall, there's a small cut here that I thought I would clarify for anime only because I thought that they might wonder why this happened. But. If you're wondering why they aren't sending any of the Dragon Scales or more soldiers to retake City Hall, dragon because scales? they decided to station them at HQ to protect it. And if okay. you're wondering why Subaru is walking around just fine, it's because Ferris cast a spell on his leg to make him feel no pain. Numb. Not that he isn't injured anymore. I think okay. this was mentioned briefly, but I figured I'd expand a little bit. I don't remember reading that part, but thanks for the reminder. And finally, the last cut relates to Aldebaran again. As mentioned in the last video, his Isekai status was cut from the anime, yeah. and so far they are acting as if it hasn't happened which does have some possibility for an anime original reveal, and we see them be consistent with it in this episode, because Subaru does not use English words when speaking with Al like he does in the novel, since mm. he doesn't think he'd get it. Even though they left in Al... 
But Al just constantly mentions stuff in English to Subaru. Using English words to Subaru. Interesting decision. Like I said, nothing that huge was cut this week, but there you go. A pretty good episode that I do think could have been a little bit better, but otherwise it was fine. See you next week. All right. Thank you so much for watching. If you like, and that's pretty much it. Again, just ugh, I get it. I get it from a storytelling perspective to keep the mystery. It's just so frustrating when you just say shit like this and uh, like Super is not saying anything. But again, like yeah, everything is you know there's so much chaos happening and we can't have. I get it. I, it's just fucking annoying. It's just super annoying. The stuff with Roy is kind of, you know, scaring me because, like, again, if you've seen Demon Slayer, <laughs> if you're trying to kill, like, these demons, you gotta cut their heads off, but, like, sometimes there's mechanics where you gotta cut, like, two people's heads off at the same time. I don't know if that's gonna happen. I guess that Roy has the same powers as Lai, or maybe if he has a totally separate, um, authority, that'd be kind of scary. Also, I thought, maybe there's, does, does this imply that there's multiple witch factors, right? I thought there's only a, one single witch factor available at a time, but if there's multiple you know, uh, Archbishops of Gluttony, what does that really mean? Maybe it's something special about, you know, Roy and, you know, uh, Lai that allows him to do that, but who really knows? But that's it for me. Please go give Mr. Asaratha a like on the video. Here's the link. And I will see you next time.